Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Lemon Tree LT03 Purple Potato. Now if you are looking to add this figure here to your collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at the Icon store and for that of course I shall include a link down in the description box below. Also be sure to use discount code Prime vs Prime for a discount off of your total order. Now taking a look here at the Purple Potato himself, I believe this is Lemon Tree's first ever time delving into the Masterpiece scale as their previously released Transformers Bumblebee Optimus Prime was around 5 inches where this figure here is definitely more in keeping with 9 to 10 inches, a scale that we have all seen from Takara Tomy and Hasbro. This figure here is also incredibly interesting as it is actually Lemon Tree's original idea that Shockwave does transform into Galvatron's Revenge which was first seen in the 1986 movie and to be honest with you that was the sole reason why I did purchase this figure as the alternate mode looks fantastic and believe me for those of you who have backed Haslab Unicron, it will be a sight to behold to have the revenge floating alongside Unicron's planet mode. So without further ado, let's bring Shockwave in and take a closer look at the detail. Starting off firstly by taking a look here at Purple Potato in his robot mode, despite the overall concept of this character being original to Lemon Tree, they have not skimped out on any of the classic Shockwave design traits, such as the Cyclops eye, the very boxy looking head design, and straight away you can immediately tell that this is supposed to be Shockwave. I also believe that the colour of Purple plastic that the figure has been cast in has turned out really nicely and believe me is actually a contender for the official Takara Tomy masterpiece figure. As we take a look here towards the detail you can see here that the head sculpt looks fantastic, very G1-esque as far as its design is concerned and I love how it looks. We of course do have Shockwave's ears sculpted here on the sides and these are indeed a separate piece which are articulated mainly due to transformation. As we turn our attention here to the torso region much like his original G1 design we have that fantastic sculpted panel line detailing here at the front which has been picked out in a very nice silver with a transparent piece of pink plastic applied over the top. As we turn our attention here to Shockwave's arms you can see the sculpt work really is awesome and I love the very sleek and elegant design to Shockwave's arms, torso as well as the lower leg region. You can see some fantastic looking sculpt work here for the torso which is mainly there to help aid his alternate mode although for robot mode I really do think it creates for a very muscular appearance. Turning our attention here down to the lower leg section of Shockwave this has been merely cast out of a grey plastic although once again you can see some nice sculpting and detailings which whilst subtle in their use really does help to break up the sculpt. Turning our attention here down to the lower section of Shockwave's legs you can once again see some fantastic looking sculpt work as well as a darker purple paint application applied over the top with some subtle lighter shades in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. Turning our attention here round to the back this is where the design does begin to be incredibly different when compared to his original G1 counterpart as we now have these huge thrusters which look fantastic fantastic. You can see that as far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned, these have come out incredibly well and I love the pointy nature here at the top. It definitely does create for a very formidable profile for Shockwave and he looks excellent. Turning our attention here to the main back kibble, I have got to be honest and say that this is nowhere near as obtrusive as I initially believed it would be. It definitely does blend in with the overall design and I think it works perfectly well. Taking a look here towards the back of Shockwave's legs, you can see how all of these various different panels do collapse in order to fill out this region and I think for the most part it has turned out rather well. Unfortunately we do have some hollow spacing here at the top although due to the articulation I do believe this was necessary in order to maximize the range of motion here for the knees. Turning our attention to Shockwave's articulation he does have a ball joint and a hinge joint here at the head and the neck which does allow him to look up that far which is to a considerable degree. He can of course look down although it is slightly obstructed due to the nature of the chest design and of course he can tilt side to side and rotate the full 360. We also do get ratchet joints here at the arms which can ratchet the full rotation although due to these thrusters here at the back they do slightly obstruct that range of motion. Of course we do get a hinge joint out to the side and if you utilize the transformation joint you can actually exceed that range of motion which is fantastic. Turning our attention here to the bicep of course we do get a full rotation. Double joint here at the elbow which allows for a fantastic range and then finally for the arm we do get a rotation here and all of the fingers are individually articulated so we have a ball joint here for the thumb as as well as a hinge joint and the same can also be applied here to these fingers so we have a ball joint here at the base and then a hinge joint at the knuckle so overall as far as this articulation is concerned I am pleasantly surprised although I maybe would have liked to have seen an additional joint so that we could have got a ball joint at the base a hinge joint at the knuckle and then a hinge joint at the tip although that is merely nitpicking we do get a full rotation here at the waist due to the nature of the transformation he does have an ab crunch although in this mode it is slightly obstructed due to the nature of the design the skirt 
Havertz here can kick forward, so you are able to ratchet the legs all the way forward, as well as, of course, all the way back. And once again, the skirt will move out of the way in order to accommodate that range of motion. We do get ratchet joints here out to the sides, as well as a rotation here at the top. We also do get a rotation here at the lower section of the knee, although that is mainly due to transformation. Of course, we do get a ratchet joint, which can bend roughly to 90. And then finally, for articulation, taking a look here at the foot, this can pivot forwards and backwards, as well as, of course, rock side to side. So overall, for a masterpiece scaled transformable figure, I believe the articulation is more than adequate, and I really have found myself getting this figure into many dynamic poses. Now, unfortunately, despite the amazing presentation as well as exceptional articulation that this figure does have, I have found myself encountering some QC issues which were not apparent on their previous release, the Lemon Tree Optimus Prime. Some of those QC issues include an LED function in the head, which just does not work. I have applied the same battery that I used here for the thrusters and it simply does just not work. It does appear as if the bulb is perhaps faulty or the mechanism that actually turns the LED on and off is not functioning properly with that particular compartment, although I am able to overlook this. I have also found that one of the ratchet joints here for the knees upon getting the figure out of the packaging was incredibly stiff and during transformation it caused for an absolute nightmare. Unfortunately, the last time that I transformed him from the Revenge into his robot mode, this ratchet joint did bust. So you can see here that it is merely just a hinge joint now and I'm really unsure as to what is actually going on inside this joint when I am just hinging this as there still is a considerable amount of friction and due to the way the screw is placed it will be very difficult for me to actually open this up which once again is incredibly unfortunate. But other than those two QC issues for the most part the figure has turned out really nicely. There are some tolerance issues that I do have a concern with mainly which I shall mention during transformation but for the most part the robot mode has turned out really nicely and I am thoroughly impressed with what they have offered us here with Purple Potato. Turning to Shockwave's accessories, surprisingly he does actually come with quite a few. The most iconic of course is Shockwave's arm cannon attachment and I was really surprised to see them using an incredibly high grade material for the spring of the hose. It for sure does beat the pliable almost rubbery material that came with the leader class siege version and is more in keeping once again with what we saw with the Takarotomi masterpiece figure. It is incredibly easy to actually swap this out so you simply just take the hand here, pull this off of this port, we can then align this section here up appropriately slide that there into place and then just take this section and this will snap into the back of one of the thrusters and it is worth noting that you can put this on either side of shockwave which is fantastic and overall I love how this looks I also like how this section of the revenge does become an almost second blaster for shockwave perhaps an aiming device much like we saw from his design from bumblebee which is super super cool they have also included a secondary blaster although this one does not have the hose attached and is really there just for symmetry so you can just pull this hand off as well if you wanted to and have shockwave dual wheel two cannons which is definitely a look you can do although in my opinion I've always preferred to display shockwave with one arm cannon and of course one of his signature hands. We do get two blast effects although these here are mainly for him when he is transformed up into the revenge so I'll showcase these later on and of course we do actually get a flight stand which is of course in order to aid the alternate mode. So without further ado let's move into some size comparisons and then we shall get down to the transformation. For a size comparison here we have the purple potato compared next to lemon trees optimus prime as well as of course the takarotomi masterpiece shockwave and you can see that as far as the scale is concerned he is certainly more in keeping with what we have seen from some of the masterpiece figures so perhaps for those of you who haven't picked up the official takarotomi shockwave you can definitely purchase this and i believe the design is truthful enough to his original g1 counterpart where he wouldn't look too out of place on the shelf i actually do prefer his design compared to the original g1 design i just love how the thrusters look there on the back and he's just so much bigger and bulkier as far as his appearance is concerned. You can also see how they are going for a different scale when in comparison to the almost 5 slash 6 inch scale that we saw with their Optimus Prime. I'm pretty certain that their two lines are indeed separate so all of the Transformers Bumblebee characters will be in this scale whereas any of their other releases shall be in the Masterpiece scale but overall he has fantastic presence and looks amazing. Turning to transformation, I shall be completely honest with you all, upon transforming the figure for the first few times I had the most hellish experience ever and it wasn't even really down to the fact that the figure is complex, it's just that the tolerances are so bad in some areas that you really do have to use pretty much all of the force that you have in your body to separate some of the components apart, although I shall cover those areas when we do actually get to those steps. So to begin with, what I would recommend doing would be to rotate the waist so that the front is now 
are facing the back, you're then going to want to take the backpack, disengage it here, and arch it down on these double hinge joints. This is definitely an area which I would recommend sanding down the pegs, as upon getting this out of the packaging, it was an absolute nightmare to separate to the point where I thought I was either going to break the figure or break myself. I simply just sliced some of the plastic here from the tabs, and now it fits together and separates so much easier. We can then turn our attention here to the front. You're going to want to straighten out all of the fingers and the thumb. We can then take this section, pull this down, and then disengage the lower forearm from the top panel. Once again, all of the joints on this figure are held in incredibly securely. So just hinge this here all the way up, take this panel, flip this section forwards, and then take this, snap that over the top, and collapse that piece in. We can then take the hand, rotate this into the hollow cavity. I would then recommend to take the shoulder joint, disengage this, take this panel and extend this up and lift this just to allow for some clearance. We can then take the bicep joint, rotate this around so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So fold out the fingers and thumbs, take this lower panel, separate that, take the lower forearm, disengage this section, whilst at the same time ensuring that this tiny little tab does flip forwards, snap that into place, snap that over the top, and then lock this into place, folding up the hand into the hollow cavity. Of course, extend on this double hinge joint, take this panel, flip that forwards, and then rotate here at the bicep. You'll then want to turn your attention here to the main torso, take this upper section and unpeg it here from two circular tabs. Now these two circular tabs, much like the backpack, do require a considerable amount of force the first time around to actually peg into these circular ports. I must say, however, that unlike the backpack, once you do it once, it does become so much easier. So for robot mode, they are held in via these two sections. For his alternate mode, you are going to want to utilize the back two circular ports. So bring this here forwards. I would then recommend turning your attention to this section, bringing this here all the way up, and then extending that on the double hinge joint. Of course, repeat the same process. So bring this section up and just extend that. We're going to want to take this panel here, fold this forwards. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. And now you can take these pieces, which to be honest, I have found pop off more often than not. So just snap that into place and then turn your attention here to this side and just disengage this and push this here all the way forwards. We can then, once again, take the two circular ports, snap all of this into place. It does require quite a considerable amount of force, but you are going to want to be left with something that looks along the lines of this. We can then turn our attention here to the back, disengage this panel, bring this entire section here out, take the head, tuck that into place. I would recommend leaving this open for now, as we're going to take these pieces, pop, this here forwards and repeat the same process pop this section here out we can then take this bring this down and collapse it and now we turn to an area which was an absolute nightmare for me these die cast pieces are on a circular pole that you need to lower and raise throughout transformation. When I went to transform him from alt mode back into robot mode, the plastic actually became stuck and due to there being no lubricant on this, it did begin to shear off the plastic. You can see how it does look very unsightly now and that is essentially because I had to take a screwdriver, pry this section up so that it would lift all the way up. So I personally would recommend applying perhaps Vaseline to these sections just to loosen them up so that it is easier to compress them. You'll then want to ratchet this section here down, ensure that this here is folded out to the side, and take this and shoot this here all the way down. We can then take all of the shoulder joints and compress them into place. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the same process. So shift this joint all the way down. And once again, you can see how it does become stuck. It's a really bad design in my opinion. It just does not want to slide down without requiring a considerable amount of force. We can then compress all of these joints here into place and then just align these up appropriately, snap them in and they will actually magnetize here at the front. Just align everything up appropriately, ensure that the hinge joints and the ratchet joints are in an alignment. We can then take these sections here, fold these upwards until they do click into place. Of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So fold that section up. What we can then do is take this section, snap that into place, and then just bring these here up and over. I would then recommend taking this joint and extending this here all the way up, just like so. 
and essentially you're going to want to ensure that these pieces here are out to the sides as we are now going to fill this gap with this section here that will then allow you to bring these pieces here down and we can extend those just to allow for some additional clearance you'll then want to take this entire region and ratchet this here all the way up i would then recommend to take the skirt sections fold these sections here out and ratchet the legs down so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this. You'll then want to turn your attention here to this section and I would highly recommend to follow exactly what I'm about to do otherwise it will be an absolute nightmare to combine both of these circular halves. So you're going to want to take this here, lift this section up, rotate it out to the side and just collapse it along the side of the leg like so. Come here to this side and repeat the same process. I shall show it from a bird's eye perspective. Hinge this section here up and then simply just collapse it here along the side of the thigh. We can then turn our attention here to the back, disengage these pegs and repeat the same process. Take this section, disengage the tabs and the slots. You'll then want to take the heel spur, lower this section down and rotate this here all the way around and just straighten that out. We'll then want to take this rotation joint, rotate this out to the side like so, extend all of this, take the kneecap and bring this section forwards. Come here to this side, pull this out and just rotate this along. We can then come here to this side and this ball joint is more than likely going to pop off, although I shall be rather delicate. You can see how it simply did just attach, which is a shame. It would be great if the tolerances were as tight on this region as they were on some of the other aspects of the figure, but just rotate this around and essentially fold out all of this. We can then turn our attention to here for robot mode. This piece here is exposed. You're going to want to compress it. We shall then turn our attention here to the foot, hinge this in and collapse this along the side just like so so that we have something which looks along the lines of this we can then proceed to straighten out the leg here at the back ensuring that everything here is out of the way and essentially you're just going to want to compress these panels into the center just like this and when it does come to this section, you will want to ensure that the skirt piece is folded forward to allow for some clearance so that this circular piece can actually slide in there with ease. Of course, come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. So hinge this up. We can then collapse this panel. Try our best to stop this section here from falling off. Open all of this out. Come here to the foot. Fold this around and out. Hinge this section here out. Rotate here at the lower knee, ratchet this section up, take this panel and you're going to want to bring this here down, which will then allow you to take this, rotate this around and compress this here into this hollow gap. Ensure that everything here is straightened and is aligned to the best of your ability. Flip around here to the front and much like the opposite side, you'll want to compress all of this here in upon itself so just compress compress snap these two halves together and this is where the fun does begin it is so difficult to actually align these pieces here up appropriately so after backtracking a few steps i have indeed found the root of evil and it's essentially that when you do transform this you must ensure that the rotation of the ankle joint here is in perfect alignment so that this circular section is pretty much dead center to what we have here with this. Once that's complete, it should be actually very easy for these two halves to compress. Just to show you how the foot should sit here at the back, you can see that the heel should look something along the lines of this. And once that's complete, hopefully, if all is well, just fold that section forwards, we should be able to combine both halves with minimal pain required let's hope so just snap that into place of course we have to ratchet this section up snap that there into place of course come here to this side and repeat the same process so just snap that into place snap these two halves in snap that in 
and then snap the underside and yes it does indeed stay perfectly tabbed in so as mentioned it is that circular section that we have here for the ankle it must be in perfect alignment and once it is aligned up pretty much perfectly dead in the center you shouldn't have any issues with this at all it's such a shame that such a minute misplacement can cause for such a frustrating transformation segment of course we'll just very quickly come here to the back and tidy all of this up and then we'll proceed by taking a look at the revenge itself And so, with the transformation process finally complete, here we have Shockwave fully transformed up into Galvatron's revenge, which was seen given to Galvatron by Unicron in the 1986 movie. And I personally believe that Lemon Tree have done a fantastic job, and it truly is such a shame that some of the tolerances do make this figure to be a little bit of a pain to actually handle. Some finishing touches that you will have to do here is actually take these sections and just extend them there at the front. But as far as the sculpt and the overall design here of the Revenge is concerned, I believe they've captured it perfectly. The fact that this entire region does turn into a circular piece really is mesmerizing and it does look fantastic. You can see everything here is tabbed in how it should be. So once again, just be cautious of that area that we do have here at the top concerning the ankle joint. But you can see that as far as the sculpt is concerned, it really does look awesome. We've got all of this fantastic sculpt work here along the side. The thrusters here look fantastic with these huge spikes here. And then, of course, we've got the transparent purple plastic, which I shall demonstrate its use in just a second. Of course, we have got this red section here at the back, which has been painted and sculpted really well. Unfortunately, this here doesn't grasp nowhere near as tightly as I would have liked it to have been. But considering the pain that I had actually getting these two halves to solidify, that is something that I am able to look past. You can see that with the stand attached, the Revenge is actually able to stand upright if you do decide to leave the display base off it will more than certainly cause for some display options as we do have this separate transparent piece of purple plastic attached to the bottom so even if you just wanted to prop it up you would more than likely apply unnecessary amounts of pressure here to this piece but you can see that we've got some really nice sculpt work here we have what appears to be windows which have been picked out in a purple paint app and just overall it does look fantastic especially with the spikes here i'm just thoroughly thoroughly impressed with what they were able to accomplish of course we can bring in the blast effects and just attach these here to the back of the thrusters spin around here to this side and of course repeat the exact same process and I love how this looks once again as mentioned previously as far as a display is concerned it will look fantastic displayed alongside the Haslab Unicron or even the Zeta Toys Unicron the Studio Cell version I think it would look really awesome with although he does have some LED functions so in order to activate these you are going to want to remove this section here from the base which does actually have a magnet attached and that's because the LED function does not work in the traditional way of an on and off switch you simply just take Take this and apply it to certain areas of the thruster and it should cause the LED function to turn on although it is rather temperamental at least here on my copy there is a sweet spot that you have to ensure is perfectly aligned for this to actually work so let's just find that sweet spot And so, with my quest of activating the LED being pretty much impossible, I shall show you a very quick way to do so. So just take this section and actually detach this, as this is how you do access the battery compartment. You are just going to want to take this here, snap that over the top, and you can see how it will activate the LED function on and off. Despite this being clever, as far as a practical feature is concerned, I find it to be really annoying to be practically searching for that sweet spot for a significant amount of time, and I personally would have much rather an on and off switch, and especially as far as the design is concerned, I believe it was more than achievable, as they could have merely just added an on and off switch here for this you could have just pushed this and it would have activated them but regardless you can see how we do get a purple led effect and i shall try to turn it off here with the magnet here's hoping that i have better luck turning it off than turning it on and nope unfortunately you can see that i am unable to find that sweet spot so definitely the practicality of this in my opinion is drastically flawed and i would have much rather just had an on and off switch and so to conclude this review of the lemon tree lt03 purple potato overall the figure looks great in both robot mode as well as his alternate mode the revenge there is no doubt about it i think that the robot mode is a really nice representation of shockwave of course it is a little more stylized as far as its design is concerned in order to accommodate the revenge 
Revenge alternate mode, but I really do love what they've done here. They've stuck truthful to the original G1 design, whilst at the same time put their own original spin on it. I think the articulation is great, all of the joints for the most part, with the exception of the broken ratchet joint that I unfortunately have for the knee, have all turned out really well. I do love the articulated fingers, I think he comes with a great array of accessories, and the figure just has presence. He is really big, tall and bulky, and will scale perfectly with your masterpiece figures. It was a shame that unfortunately on my copy, the LED function for the head does just not appear to be working. I'm not sure whether it is a fault with the actual LED itself, or perhaps I'm just doing it completely wrong. As you could see when I was trying to activate the LED function here on the thrusters, I had a really difficult time in doing so, and I do wish it could have just been a simple case of an on and off switch or just a push button. I do appreciate what they were trying to do with the magnetic function, but as far as practicality is concerned, I believe that it just does not work. As we turn our attention to transformation, the transformation is on the complex side, although in my opinion, that is not a downfall of the figure. It is merely the tolerances and some of the design choices. The fact that you have to have pieces aligned up literally 100% correctly, otherwise the figure will not transform, can create for a nightmarish experience, as you saw with that entire back cylindrical section here of the Revenge. But once we do get him transformed up into the Revenge, it looks fantastic. And as far as the display is concerned, this is how I shall be keeping Purple Potato. He looks awesome. And as mentioned throughout this review, will be a great companion piece to any Decepticon 86 movie shelf posed alongside the likes of Galvatron, Unicron, Zeta Toys, or Haslab. And at the time of this recording, this figure here is really one of its own kind. We have had nothing which can transform to my knowledge, especially a shockwave that can transform into the revenge. So overall, I am thoroughly impressed with the way the figure looks. It's just that I wish some of the QC and tolerances were slightly adjusted to create for a more enjoyable experience. And so with all that being said, if you are looking to add Purple Potato to your collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at the Icon store. And for that, of course, I shall include a link down in the description box below. Be sure to use discount code Prime versus Prime for a discount off of your total order. And I would love to know down in the comment section below what you guys think of this piece and whether or not you agree or disagree with some of my thoughts. I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.